One of the most requested films I was asked to analyze was Eyes Wide Shut from Stanley Kubrick. Released in 1999, it was Kubrick's final film before his sudden death. While some speculate, if given the chance, Kubrick would have made further edits. But as it was, his final cut was his final cut. Eyes Wide Shut is a psychological drama with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman and an adaptation of Arthur Schnitzler's 1926 novella, Dream Story. This will be an introductory video as I will be discussing a particular theme throughout the film. It has been right in front of us, and that is the power of two, how Eyes Wide Shut uses pairs. As always, the alternative theories mentioned within may cause anxiety, rage, and disbelief, but that's why you're here, I hope. They say the easiest way to introduce characters in a story is by twos. Having a pair interact, especially through dialogue and exposition, seems more natural. They talk to the audience by talking with one another. This is how Eyes Wide Shut begins with Bill and Alice having an unusually casual and almost irritably unarousing discussion in the bathroom. When they arrive at the party, still walking side by side just as they had in their apartment, also a subliminal message on their partnership. They meet their host, Victor Ziegler, and his wife. It's a pair of a pair. Also, we see more than two married couples, but two associations. Alice and Bill dance. We see a much bigger picture that dwarves the couple. They are lost in a world of pairs. Alice questions why she and Bill were invited when they don't know anyone else. This emphasizes their lack of association. We would use the word networking today, whether it's business, family, or for lack of better words, tribal. Bill replies how he associates with Victor in a doctor-patient relationship that can also be described as their private one-on-one -on -one relationship. But like Bill, has his marital relation with Alice and a professional one with Victor. We see by dialogue that Bill and other relationships are not exclusive. You can take this one step further and say it's not monogamous. This is a subtle foreshadowing of the method of theme that we will see alliances split and regroup elsewhere. The dance isn't over yet, and Bill goes on, bringing up past networking experiences with the piano player and ex-medical schoolmate Nick Nightingale. Notice how Alice declines joining her husband to say hello to Nick. This is a literal symbol of branching off and creating new alliances in front of the camera. Alice exits, and we have a new pair, Bill plus Nick. I'm not going to go too deep into their short conversation. I'll describe it as brief, a little off, and something not right. Almost the same uneasy feeling with Bill and Alice in the bathroom. The only gracious couple intro was with Victor, and we'll see that was a lie. But back to Bill and Nick. Their short talk is interrupted by an unhappy looking gentleman. This makes me propose an appendix to the theme of pairs, one of threes, and three being an unlucky number and harbinger of dread. Meanwhile, we catch on that Alice has stepped away for a drink and a discussion with a new partner, Sandor the Hungarian. Alice and Sandor dance. Sandor tries very smoothly to seduce her. We jump to Bill, who just happens to make conversation with two young ladies. The ladies embrace each other, making them a pair. With Bill, however, it makes three and is bad luck. They try to seduce him. Is this fate tempting him or fate warning him of making poor life decisions? Bill is called to Mr. Ziegler's private bathroom, complete with ornate furniture, bidet, and fireplace. Who lives here? Some supervillain? Victor is half-dressed, and Mandy, not his wife, is zero-dressed. We take great notice of Ziegler shifting association from his wife, who is downstairs, to Mandy, not his wife, who is upstairs. It can be debated whether the theme of either two or three are played here. There are three people, but one is dying. Or, we see a new association of two, Bill and Victor, with Mandy not being a person, but an object. Bill saves Mandy's life, and Victor, who doesn't have to say it, suggests this incident stays between them two. An alliance is made. On the dance floor, an alliance is broken or never made between the Hungarian and Alice. Alice returns home with her husband, 
as each split and experience their own stories, they reunite. We get a montage of the daily routines of Alice and Bill. Bill is mostly framed with two others in a single cut. Alice is framed with one other, her daughter. If I had to make something of the numerical differences, I would postulate imbalance between the couple, and it resorts to herbal medicine. The opportunity for an unfiltered discussion sours. Alice speaks about another man, a third party, met during a vacation she fantasizes about. Mentioning a third in a group of two once more brings misery and suffering. Bill is called away to make a house call. We get a wide shot of three. Bill, the patient, and the patient's daughter. More misery as the patient is dead. This leaves the daughter, Marion, alone with Bill, who tries to seduce him. With a dead body in the next room, he refuses her. Timing is everything. I would appreciate so much if you smash that like button. It helps me decide what content to create next, gives the channel momentum. Besides, it's a nice thing to do. It's easier than showing up at a party uninvited. Now, I'm not going to continue to cover every example of two or three characters in a frame. However, they do keep surfacing, alluding to a trade of information or a transaction. One thing I noticed, that when there is a sum of three or a three sum, the situational theater posed is awkward or embarrassing, at least up to the costume ceremony. The ceremony is the apex of the film, setting between mirror images of the first and second halves. Speaking of mirrors, they are extremely reserved and eyes wide shut, unlike another film of Kubrick's where mirrors and reflections are frequent. We only see them in bathrooms, but never the reflections themselves. There is no pairing of an individual with him or herself. The ceremony is where Bill begins his character arc, when he's in over his head. The crowd in the room is merely a sea of anonymous humanity. The crowd in the room is merely a sea of anonymous humanity. There are very few examples where Bill and the Red Cloak share an unobscured frame together. When Bill's scheme unravels, the camera tracks behind robed participants flickering the existence of the pair sharing the frame. When Bill is discovered, signified by exposing his face, there are no more pairings with the Red Cloak. Regardless of the backdrop, Bill is framed alone in mid-shots and close-ups. The Red Cloak also is framed in mid-shots and close-ups. Their propensity, the theme of going out of its way to pair characters, breaks at this moment. Not only is Bill alone, but we will see half of pairs disappear, die, or both. Nick Nightingale is escorted out of the city. Marion is out of reach. Domino is not in her apartment. Recent news of her health is unpleasant. Then there is Mandy, who passed away, maybe from overindulgence, or maybe not. If you're wondering if the number three is still in play, it sure is. While there are smiles, it's not a happy moment. Then there is the dramatic confrontation between Victor Ziegler and Bill in Victor's billiard room. The parallels between here and the costume get-together with the red cloak are numerous. That's for another video. Here, there are liberal examples of single-frame characters. It teases back and forth between wide shots, mid shots, and close ups. When the discussion is cordial, we see them together, sharing a drink, for example. When it gets contentious, both are framed individually. The distance between them is ambiguous, perhaps signifying emotional distance or disagreement. What Ziegler says, how he says it, mirrors how the camera frames him. When Ziegler feels he's reached an understanding with Bill, the final cut has them paired. Victor's hands rest on Bill's shoulder, and either as an act of assurance or like a puppet master. There are metaphoric pairs as well. There are two parties. The first, Ziegler's, where everyone arrives in twos, the guests disguise themselves from the inside. The second, with the Mardi Gras theme, Bill arrives as a single, where everyone wears costumes on the outside. The first party, people show their faces, but not their motivations. The second, they hide behind a mask, but their intentions are laid bare. 
There are also pairings when it comes to a double life. Ziegler has one. Bill tries to live one. Alice fantasizes about one. Same could be said about former beauty queen Mandy, Nick, and all the important people. Does Eyes Wide Shut end on a happy note? Alice and Bill somewhat reconcile. Seeing the family of three through a Toy Story at Christmas could be a sign the curse of three was lifted. But I leave you with a final observation. The last cut shows Alice and Bill together in a single frame. They are a pair. Let me know in the comments below what was your favorite Kubrick theme in Eyes Wide Shut. This is Mr. G of Synergy saying, when social engineering threatens to breach your private network, use two-factor authentication. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.